The Mendian Honey Eye Falls Lima Sentinel welcomes you to this edition of the Mayor's and Supervisor's Weekly Update, brought to you by... Each week, our community makes history. Each week, you make history. And each week, there's only one source to turn to for the first take on history. You know what that is? Subscribe to the Sentinel right now to discover the history being made in your own backyard. The Mendian Honey Eye Falls Lima Sentinel. More than just your news, it's your history. Hey, welcome everyone to this week's edition of the Mayor's and Supervisor's Update. I'm Chris Carosa, publisher of the Men in Honey Eye Falls Lima Sentinel. And each week, we bring you the goings on in the towns and villages that we cover. This week, we'll be starting off with John Moffat from the town of Menden. John, what's going on in Menden? Well, a couple of things, Chris. Uh, first of all, we do have some uh, speed monitors, as many of uh, my other municipal partners have up at this point in time uh, due to complaints about speed. The monitors that we have, uh, we can uh, download the information and send it to the Monroe County Sheriff's Department, and then they decide if it's uh, warranted for uh, a situation where the county sheriff sets up with radar. But uh, any of that information, if you're curious, is uh, available to our residents with a FOIL request. If, if you see the speed monitor on your road and you're like, they're going 80. Um, and, uh, you know, you can request the, uh, the printout and we'll send it to you and you can see exactly how fast they're going. Uh, let's see, still uh, dealing with some storm cleanup and uh, various parts of, of the town of Menden. Uh, the highway department is not doing a complete brush pickup. They are just uh, hitting the spots that were Affected by this latest storm, there will be another brush pickup in the fall, that date to be announced. Uh, we're working on our 2025 budget, and uh, I know people either watch or listen to this because I genuinely get questions about things that I discuss or one of my counterparts discuss on this. Um, one is that... Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting. One person said, ah, every time you talk about something, usually there's a money factor. Well, the town supervisor is the chief financial officer of the town. And to do anything, just like your home budget, you got to have the funding to do it. And the reason I say that is because when I do talk about something that the town's involved with, uh, generally I will talk about the funding source or how we're going to pay for it and that type of thing. Uh, one question I had recently was about the spray park. I went into the indebtedness of the town of Menden. I did men mention any indebtedness for the spray park, and that is because we have none. Uh, between the uh, funding that we got from the trickle down from the federal government to the state, to, to the county, to the towns for uh, ARPA money, uh, funding that the Legion Post 664 had for the military memorial, and some uh, money in our parks uh, reserve fund, we were able to pay for that spray park and uh, not incur any debt. Uh, as I mentioned, we are in the process of uh, working on our budget, so that I want to dovetail into that as far as if it's not in our budget for 2025, we're generally not going to be able to do it because there isn't any funding. There will be a public hearing, most likely in October. And uh, we want to hear from our residents. And it's never too early to contact myself and say, hey, we think we need blank. Did the town ever think about doing that? And uh, if, if, if there's a consensus amongst the board members that that's something we need to do, then we certainly will consider it, look into the costs involved. Summer wreck is starting to wind down. Uh, hopefully summer's not winding down quite as fast as summer wreck is. But anyway, the school, of course, has to get in and do uh, a lot of work in the, in the various buildings. So they can't, summer wreck can't run all summer. But uh, it is winding down. I know they've had record numbers of participants this year. Uh, great program. Uh, certainly uh, works out very well. We'll continue to store the equipment in the basement. Uh, on Monroe Street, which is the former library, what we've done for several years, and uh, we put it in storage in the basement until next year. And uh, lastly, you may have seen on social media that uh, there's a lot of work being done on Main Street and Honey Eye Falls. 
So one of the things that we did is that we had a piece of cement outside the uh, door that faces Main Street that was in pretty rough shape. So we uh, poured a new cement slab, rather small there compared to all the other work being done in the village. But we did pour a new one and we do have a new door that'll be going in in the next couple of weeks to replace the uh, metal door that's there that's in pretty sad shape. Uh, the doors facing the parking lot, which are mahogany, uh, we're also looking into having those refinished uh, because they face the west. They do take an awful beating from the weather, but uh, it, they are beautiful doors and we want to make sure we take care of those so that they last even longer. And that'll cover it for the town of Mendon. All right. Thanks, John. Over to Rick Mill in Honey Eye Falls. What's going on there, Rick? Well, it's great to see everyone again. Um, you know, I know uh, Supervisor Falk will be following up and, and talking a lot about events going on in, in Lima. But boy, if you don't have a, a whole lot going on this weekend, Lima is definitely the place to be. So kudos to uh, the Lima group because they put on a heck of a show uh, this time of year. So um, I'm going to start out with just a couple of things because uh, Supervisor Moffitt was just talking about funding and 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 he's absolutely right you know if it's not in the budget it's probably not going to get done and and uh, our budget process process starts a little bit later uh because we're on diff different fiscal years than the towns but um you know he, he brings up a great point if you want to if you need something or if you if you're interested in having us add something to the budget or a project for the upcoming year um reach out to us because if we don't know about it and it's not in the budget it's probably not going to get done so the supervisor was right on with that. But along with that, I do want to mention from a county standpoint, uh, the county of Monroe is going to be designating, um, it's going through the approval process, but we do uh, plan to designate some $6 million of the ARPA funding to uh, go directly to our suburban village and town municipalities within Monroe County, uh, specifically for Municipal Senior and Youth Congregate Programming. Uh, this will be to provide funding to support the congregate programming and related equipment. So my hope is that uh, somehow this will be able to dovetail into both uh, potentially the uh, summer rec program. I, I can't say that that's going to be the case, but certainly the town of Mendon and Village of Honeyway Falls do have some senior programs we have a youth uh, program at the library, the old library, as John has mentioned men multiple times. Um, I'm hoping that there'll be some funding that the town may be able to tap into. Um, I do know it's going to be apportioned uh, by population. Um, so certainly Mendon, Honeyway Falls, we're a little bit smaller communities, but every little bit helps. Um, so I'm going to be working on gathering more information, and I'll certainly uh, send that out to Supervisor Moffitt and, and the other supervisors that I represent as county legislator, and I'm sure my fellow legislators will as well. But that's some good news. Um, we fought really pretty hard to get uh, the towns and villages some funding from this as well. Um, also, kind of um, county-related, this coming uh, week, not, not this weekend, but the following weekend, um, August 8th through the 10th, I just want to mention is the Rush Carnival, the Rush Fire Department Carnival. That's always a great carnival as well. The parade is on Friday night. Um, they have fireworks as well. And it's, you know, between the Menden Fire Department Carnival and the Rush Carnival, they're, they're two of the bigger ones around that are still really active in Monroe County um, for our local residents. So try to uh, spend some time in Rush next weekend as well. Moving back to the village of Honeyway Falls, um, our projects continue. Uh, progress is being made. We're happy about that. Um, the National Fuel Pipe Replacement Project, which really was uh, through the sidewalk projects as well, but mainly on West Main Street and Norton Street, um, the, the fuel line project portion is completed. And now uh, most of the sidewalk work is completed as well. Um, we have to get the, um, the, the contractor is going to have to get the stamped concrete portion completed. 
We're really pushing to get this done and cleaned up properly. It's important to note though, that the village does not control this project, um, but we are doing our best to push the contracting company to not only finish the project, but to repair some of the other damages that have been done as well. Um, we we want to make sure that uh, it's a nice project and that the work that is completed is up to par. And, and quite honestly, some of it we feel has not been up to par and we're trying to get that corrected. Um, a little bit more news on projects, the bridge project on East Street. Um, this was originally expected to be a one to two, maybe three month project. Um, it's being directed by New York State DOT and it has become a much more involved project than originally expected. Um, quite honestly, as they got under the bridge and started doing the work that was planned, they found a lot more repair that needed to be done. And in, you know, in the, in the need of safety, um, and since they're under there doing the work, they're extending the project. This is actually going to be working, we're told, through the end of October. So this is a very detailed project, a lot of work to do. Again, the village and the town don't, you know, we don't control it, but we have to answer to it, it seems like. Um, so we're continuing to push the DOT and the, and the contractors as best we can. But we're also very happy that this work is being caught and that this work is being completed. That's really critical. Um, and the village, lastly, I want to say the village was happy to see another Eagle Scout project completed. Uh, we've had a couple completed as of late. Um, I'll probably report on another one next week, but uh, young Mr. Matthew Peters completed a, a really nice project. He worked very diligently, not only with the village, but <clears throat> with our cemetery group and also the American Legion Post 664. And he has placed over 400 military veteran grave markers uh, in the village of Honeyoy Falls Cemetery. And we applaud his efforts. Um, he did, a, it took a lot of coordination. He worked with a local uh, company actually in Lima to uh, laser engrave these um, specifically specially made grave markers that were put into the ground with six or eight inch spikes. Um, so we'll be able to mow over them, we'll be able to trim around them. But I believe um, every veteran's grave in Honeyoy Falls Cemetery is now marked with one of these markers and we'll be trying to keep up with that. And we maybe hope that it'll be another additional um, Eagle Scout project for another Eagle Scout, but we're really happy to, to see this done. And Matthew Peters, kudos to him and his whole project and his whole group that helped him. So a uh, really nice project uh, to have done. So with that, um, I'll end and thank you again for the opportunity. It's great to see everybody. Thanks, Rick. And now it's over to Mike Falk, town of Lima and leader of the Lima Crossroads Festival Parade. So Mike, what's going on there? Well, Chris, uh, thanks for having us. I, of course, as you are seeing this online uh, on Sunday, uh, there are still bands playing at the Crossroads Festival. Uh, if you're reading this in the newspaper, the festival is already in the record books. I uh, thank you very much to Bears Playgrounds for being our 2024 festival sponsor. I uh, thanks also to Smidgens uh, Laser Cutting. Uh, Crossroads Chiropractic, Skyport IT, Lakelands Concrete, and Fanatics for being our presenting sponsors, and all the rest of our sponsors who donated to make the festival a huge success. Uh, thank you to all the volunteers who turned out to sweep and clean the festival tents, uh, move garbage around, make sure that the downtown is looking fantastic. And lastly, thank you to the Crossroads Council itself, which I'm president of, uh, this is a group of a dozen volunteers who put this festival on, and uh, without them, there would be nothing here. So from the bottom of my heart, thanks, guys. Uh, the Lima Town Board is meeting on Tuesday, uh, August 6th. Uh, the uh, water survey data discussion 
is going to be put off until the September 3rd meeting. The Water Authority uh, wanted some extra time to be able to put together the data in a uh, much better coherent uh, way. Uh, we will be uh, discussing other things, though. The agenda is up on the uh, town website. And lastly, congratulations to the American Hotel. Uh, this past Friday, August 2nd, uh, Senator Pam Helming inducted the American Hotel into the New York State Historic Business Hall of Fame. Uh, after uh, 100 plus years there, three generations of the Reynolds family, this is a, a really nice honor for them for all of the hard work and dedication uh, coming through uh, the hard times and the good times, uh, surviving uh, the Depression, Prohibition, etc. Um, the American Hotel is uh, really the anchor of our downtown, and it is great to see this award go to them. And that's all I've got, Chris. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everybody. Any, either John or, or Rick, do you have anything more to add? Uh, off the record, uh, as a descendant of the Fanukin family that used to uh, own and run the American Hotel, thumbs up. Nice. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for being here. Thank you all for watching. Remember, we broadcast this every Sunday at 1 o'clock on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Like the page, subscribe to the channel, and those platforms will notify you when the broadcast begins. Otherwise, you could read it in the paper next week. And uh, every week we run a transcript of this. So that's all for this week. We'll see you all next week. Bye-bye for now. The Mendon Honey Falls Lima Sentinel welcomes you to this edition of the Mayor's and Supervisors Weekly Update, brought to you by... Imagine yourself communicating with a difference. Pandimensional Solutions helps you do this. Whether live spectator events, taped broadcasts, or real-time audience-engaging programs, you can benefit immediately from the tools Pandimensional Solutions will share with you. Do you want to make a difference? Contact us at pandimensional.com.